I'm Lisa Beth Kovitz. Every kite climbing into the sky is a sublime feat of simple physics. We turn to some kite flying experts to give us the lowdown on how a kite gets into the sky. A kite flies for the same reason an airplane flies. A kite flies when the forces that lift overcome the forces of gravity. The downward force of gravity is also known as weight. A flying kite is a successful battle of, of lift over gravity. And these forces of physics that lift a child-sized kite are the same forces that lift a much larger, grown-up kite. We're here at the New York Kite Center where kite flying is taken to the extreme. Owner John Ferreira explains to us how these same basic principles of physics apply even when the kite is flying the kid. At the end of this bar, there's a giant kite. When I push the bar away, I get less lift, and when I push the bar in, I get more lift. And that's because, just like pulling on the string of your little kite will make it dip or soar, changing the angle of your giant kite alters the amount of wind it can hold. More wind, more lift. Less wind, less lift. Yeah, so the forces of lift are not the only forces in play here. We also have a lot of pull generated from the kite. So as I dive the kite into position, it's going to pull me downwind in that direction. It's much like sailing. If you notice, a sailboat will go across the wind back and forth and actually has the ability to go upwind as well. Those forces in play are the same as kiteboarding. So this board here is something that is pretty common for kiteboarding and it allows you to, again, push on the water in a certain way that's going to allow you to glide across the water. The lift of the kite reduces the forces of gravity, which actually allows you to stand on the water. Kiteboarders use science in all kinds of interesting ways. Anybody who's playing on the water is concerned about the weather, but how do you predict the wind? This time of the year, we get a lot of thermal winds. That's created because the temperature of the land is much warmer than the temperature of the water. So as the air rises off the land, it draws in air from the ocean, creating a sea breeze or thermal winds. And by keeping a close eye on changing temperatures, kiteboarders can get a pretty good idea of how strong that breeze will be, which is very important because a lesser breeze needs a bigger kite to win the battle against gravity. Kiteboarding may look extreme, but the New York Kite Center teaches kids and parents and grandparents, and there's no better place to learn than our great South Bay. Turns out geography is very important in kiteboarding, and New York's large, flat expanse of waist-deep water with wind from multiple directions is the perfect combination. From Amityville, Long Island, this has been Lisa Beth Kovitz for Science and You.